hello, good morning, good day to you, and what a wonderful day it is today. This is the day that the Lord has made. It's a wonderful Mother's Day, and I want to say to all the moms watching today, happy Mother's Day, and I want to thank you so much for who you are, for what you've impacted in the lives of everyone, and because of that, we are who we are today. Thank you for being the most incredible mom in this world, wherever you are. I'm thinking about um, our past Christmas that we've had, and we had a family lunch, and my mom sat at the table next to me, and after we said our prayers and Thanksgiving, I glanced over at her, and she just suddenly had this sadness all over her, and my heart really leapt out for her, and uh, I knew that she was in that moment missing my late father. So um, my late dad went on to be with the Lord about five, six years ago. Anyway, so the thing is, mothers, you may have lost your partner. You may have lost a child or you may just feel alone or alone in a home or in an institution at the hospital, wherever you are. Know that God is with you. Our thoughts and our prayers are with you. So you're not alone if you're on this platform, that you are here by divine appointment. You're here because God has this word prepared for you. Now, I want you to stay tuned because God's got something great downloaded that he wants to bless you with this day. Amen. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for your word. We thank you, Lord God, for your mighty power, for your love, your omniscient, your omnipotent, your oh God that is more than enough. And, Lord, we honor you. We bless you. We praise you, Father God, that we will be the light in this dark world, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, to bring your love and your light to those who need it today. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, of Jesus, we thank you for loving us, God. We thank you for your loving kindness toward us, Father God. And we thank you for this new day that you've given us, Father. We thank you, Lord, for the prayers that you've answered and for the prayers that you are about to answer, even for those who are listening today, Father God. Your perfection, your will be done in and and through our lives, Lord, and may it be exhibited as we go with you, for you, into the dark places. Let our light so emanate, Lord, through us to bring hope and healing wherever you go. Father, right now, Lord, I ask you today that you are always, Lord, I know you always the way maker. You are the one that brings restoration. Father, open doors that no man can shut. Father, we thank you that you are the one that fights our battles, oh God. You are the one that order our footsteps. Father, I pray today that you will heal the ones on the broadcast this day, Father God, in this very moment, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, save the one that needs to be saved, Lord. Reclaim the life, oh God, that needs to be reclaimed, Lord. Snatch that one from the enemy's um, hands, oh God, that he wants to destroy. Father, we cancel that destruction off of their lives right now in the name of Jesus. May your word bring transformation may it may we look more like you daddy as we give you all the glory the honor and the praise for everything that you're doing in the mighty name of Jesus you allow God today he would say to you right now may I it is a month of May a month that God is about to manifest on this mother's day he said to you may I please may I intervene may I just interject into your life right now the Lord is speaking to a mother here right now because he says for too long you've been holding on to this bitterness and this anger, the resentment for too long, the separation and misunderstanding that it's caused, the tormenting thoughts that the enemy has been bombarding you with on a daily basis, saying you're not enough, saying that you're not a good mom. That is a lie from the enemy. And I'm sure that you can't even remember the reason why you are so um, far away from your estranged child. So the Lord wants to restore that today because he says, may I please manifest my love in this mother and child relationship so father have your way today if that is you say lord have your way today as you heal to him and i heal to him i heal to you right now lord as i allow you father to come and take control and of every faculty of my being lord that you can speak to me i heal this vessel to you father right now by the power of your holy spirit in the name of jesus on this mother's day may your word be manifest and bring healing to all 
all the hearers today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. There's an illustration that Paul gives us in the word of God in 2 Timothy chapter 1. And I was so encouraged. I'm always encouraged by this. We've had over the past two days our mother and child broadcast live workshop, a virtual workshop on the Woman of Substance essay page. And um, we've had four speakers, speakers, real stories, real life issues and challenges that women and mothers are faced with. And yesterday, um, my daughters and I were online as well. And I'm sure you might have learned or, or experienced or got to know us a little bit better as you watched that as well. But, you know, I'm going to um, read from the scripture in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1 to 5, where Paul writes to Timothy because, you know, Paul was one of the prestigious guys in the Bible. He was one of those apostles of note. You know, he was the guy. And he went, he writes uh, to Timothy, who is a pastor, and he says to him, he refers to him as my beloved son. You know, he was so fond of Timothy, and Paul really honored Timothy so much. And in that, we can learn so much for ourselves. And this is what he says. I thank God, whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing, I have remembrance of thee in my prayers, night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be full with joy when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Louis and in thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that it is in thee also. Now Paul had the faith he had this because of his mother and of his grandmother. Now, every mother's desire is to have her children acknowledge Jesus with this amazing kind of faith that he did, which was attributed to his mother and his grandmothers. You know, I remember when I was a child, and, and I want to give my mother all the honor today for the way she raised us. You know, when I was home with her on a Sunday, she would take us to church. She would lead by example. And um, when I'd go and visit my grandmother, then she would take me to church. When I'd go and visit my aunt, then she would take me to her church or I'd go with my cousin. So everywhere I went, it was like God was following me saying, you're not going to run away. You're not going to get out of this. Everywhere I went to spend weekends at, I was I found myself in a church service on a Sunday and be it all different church backgrounds or different belief um, churches, it didn't matter to me because I enjoyed it so much. Lord, help me in that way because my mother and my grandmother were the ones who imparted and instilled the values and the faith in me. And this is why I know that my mother is a praying mother. So they helped me see Jesus in all of these wonderful ways. So in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 16, you see how the disciples followed Jesus up onto the mountain. And he said, come on, let me speak to you about how you should live. And he says, in all of these things at the end, he says, but you will be persecuted, you know, and then he said to them, but don't be afraid because you are the light of this world. And there are moms that I'm sure that you are the source of light for your children. I know that you are because we allow ourselves, we, we push our children. We push them when they say, oh, I have the ability or I desire to do this and to do this sport or to study this or play this instrument. We push them in every direction because we want them to experience the best, and we want them to use the gifts that God has blessed them with so that they can be an instrument to be used by Him. Amen. So we see that as a mother, you have the light in you, and that is the light that emanates from you onto your children, and it will go from your children and onto their children. All right. So this is he's, he says this in the dark places, many times we cannot see where we're going, right? But you are the light. You are the one, you are the star, the light that makes you see others and also the light that makes you see deeper than others can see. In Daniel 12 verse 3, it says, And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever 
and ever. And this is the kind of brightness that every mother desires to install and to leave within a child, that that brightness will shine forever and ever as they go through in life. And you still have that light shining through you, mom. You know, I was thinking of the lights that we use in our homes, the light bulbs. So the impact that they have on you, you know, some of people may have a light, but they may have no impact. They are so dim. So the lumens is what measures the brightness in a bulb. So a standard 60 watt um, bulb, for example, produces 800 lumens of light. And this will determine how much and how far you can see. So we pray that the Lord will bring more lumens into your life. You will enhance that and make you brighter. So the lumens is what we receive kind of thing in when we spend time in his presence, you know. So when you think of buying a light, think of the lumens. When you think of making your light shine, think of the love. I want to turn that word lumens into love because the more time you spend in the presence of God, that is more love that he pours upon us. You know, I was driving the other day and I was saying, God, how does a mother and child's love, how can you explain that? You know, and he said the simple one. He said the simple way to do this, my child. He says, if they love me the way I love them, then the, my love will emanate through them and make it so much easier. So if you do not love God, if you don't know God, if you don't have a relationship with him, I bet it's probably difficult to find love or to know love or to experience love or to give or receive love. So the thing is, love God first. Let his love emanate through you. Grow in that love relationship with him and he'll take care of the rest. So if you are battling with fighting for a relationship, fighting for a mother's love, first fight for the love of the Father, love of Jesus Christ. Let him emanate his light and love through you. That is what he desires from you. So mom, you have the light for the community. You may have the light for your family, but you have to have that light especially shine for your children, spending time in the word so they can hear you pray. If you're a one mom that is complaining and talking about people and murmuring, no wonder the children have no respect for God or for his word and may not even have respect for you because of your conduct. So the greatest gift I'm, I can share with you is what my mom gave me was that she showed me the light. She prayed for me. She still prays for us. She believes in us. She believed in me. And this is why I know that I know that when you have a mom that believes in you, you can do anything. When you have a mom that trusts you, you are able to do anything. So I don't want you to hide your light. God doesn't want you to hide your light. Don't be afraid of the persecution because your light will shine and they will see the light of God in you. So we will be accountable, mothers. Teach your children. We will all be accountable to God. So this is what says in Matthew chapter 5 and verse, uh, chapter, verse 15 and 14 and 15. It says, you are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill that, that cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Unto all that are in the house. Verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven so what are these good works i want to just touch on camp there for a minute the good works is the way you conduct your life this is how god wants us to to work the good work is our conduct. And that refers to how we dress. It refers to how we speak. It refers to how we as, as children of God, some people want to be like the world. They want to dress like the world. They want to emulate the world in so many different ways. But don't, we cannot be hypocrites. Your life, the way that you live is going to determine what worth and what value and what good works you bring forth to your children so they can glean from you. It says in verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Let them so shine. Do good, but 
Let the love and the light of God shine through you always. Don't want to be just great on a Sunday and look all holy and worship and pray. And yes, Lord, in church and can agree with the preacher when they preach us. And I, I really just want to help someone out there. We need to be a constant, not just a Sunday Christian. We need to be constantly living the good life, sharing the good light and the good works of the Lord in and through what we do so that the Father and glorify the Father which is in heaven. That is our moral conduct, how you make your decisions, what you base your decisions on, what you think. You know, many, many people think about making money. They want to impress others. Some just want to get high. You know, they want to live in the moment. But you need to give life meaning. Give life such meaning that you will look at God and say, Lord, have your way in me. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in and through my life. Come on, because your light will continue to shine, mother. Don't hide it under a bushel. Don't let your children determine your emotions or your feeling or, or your countenance. Don't let them determine how you will live. You know your godly identity. You know that you have God and his light is in you. Sometimes you allow that light to go down or diminish or, or just flutter or or be dim because of what you allow in to your spirit, what you allow into your heart. I and mean, so here's the key, honor. Bring honor where honor is due. Give honor where honor is due. You know, today is Mother's Day, and I want to speak to those children. Honor your mom. Love her unconditionally, even when she's growing old. She lay down her life for you. They love her until she has nothing left to give. You know the bumper stickers that says, have you loved your child today? Let me tell you something. How about hugging your mother? Did you hug your mother today? You know, there's that saying, hang your the precious, most precious jewels a mother can wear around the neck of the loving arms of her children and children love your mothers you may be sitting next to your mom or she might be in another room or she may be in another place but go and hug her lovingly kissing her affectionately you know I kiss my mom and her cheeks and I see the wrinkles and I'm like oh my gosh she's still so beautiful and she's aging and I just cuddle her more and more and I just want to hold her and love on her and put my head on her shoulders and and just pour more love on her show a affection to her she will appreciate it you know she's done it all for you she's raised you she's given you life she taught you biblical principles she taught you how to pray you know and if you didn't have the opportunity to or allow her to do it she may desire to do it for you right now so go to her and make that say I love you hug her listen you don't want to live a life of regrets you don't want to 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 move her around today and say, you know what, I should have done that. Seize the moment each day before each before it's too late. What do we do? We run to mom every time we have a challenge, every time we want to tell her something, right? So why don't you want to be sympathetic and be attentive when she wants to talk to you? Some children just say, oh, yeah, okay, mom, okay, bye, right, you know. Or, no, I can't listen, now I must go. And all she desires, like the father, is time with you. She's been listening to you all of your life. While she was raising you, you stump your toe, your bags fall, a kid fights with you, you lost something, you run to mother for help. She's your everything. She's your go-to person. But now in her age and you're mature, you forget about her. You don't want to have a relationship. You don't want to speak to her, tell her your deep secrets. She wants to know you. She wants to, to know what's coming out of you because she wants to see what she's instilled inside of you, whether you're using the, the treasures, the gold and the nuggets that she taught you over life. So don't ignore her. She's valuable. She's priceless. Her love cannot be compared to any other. You know, God's love is so beautiful. And when you experience his love and his forgiveness and his joy, you will know how to experience that from your mother, because then you'll know what it is that you're giving and what it is that you're receiving. Be sympathetic, be kind to water, be generous to water, love her, lavish her with gifts, give her surprises, take her for walks, you know, no matter how young or old she is, 
do something spectacular, not just on Mother's Day, but every opportunity. Seize the moment to be kind to her, shower her, take the children to her, spend time with us, take the grandchildren to her. My mother has a beautiful thing about her. You know, we are four, four children and she probably has something like 20 grandchildren. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not even sure how many grandchildren they're all together, but she knows each and every one of them by name. She knows them individually. She knows their personalities. She is still so alert about what's going on around her. You know, she, my mom's 80. Yeah, 80, she 80. She'll be 81 this year, but, but she, she is still so alert. So no matter what you may think, about 80 year olds, they are still alive and they're still alert and they can still do things. They are still at their full senses. Don't treat them like they are invalids or that they don't know what's going on around them. I'm just sharing this because I experienced this with my own mother. She still wants to do things and, and we allow her to just be that. You want me to allow your mother into your space. If she wants to cook, let us cook up her favorite meal. You know, she, they don't want to just sit in a corner and knit. That is what society depicts. They think old people have just got to go and sit in a corner and knit and read a book or watch the news. No, they like to be active and do things. So don't undermine your mother. All right. She is so powerful. Love her from your heart, not from what is in your pocket or in your purse. Lover unconditionally. A mom just wants you to talk to her. We are defined by the choices we make. Let her know today that you still need her, that you still honor her, and give her the best seat in the house, in your vehicle, and mostly in your heart. Amen. To a mother that is on her knees, you've been crying out. You've been standing in the gap for your children. God stretching his hand, his arm out to you right now. He's saying, my daughter, I've seen your tears. I've caught them in a bottle. To the mother with special needs, hold on to the light in you. It's going to get easier. You will no longer be alone, says the Lord. To the mother who's been abandoned by the by the. But the children or has been estranged from the children. God is bringing restoration. Mother, you need to forgive them. The Bible says, like Jesus said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Mothers, forgive your children. Children, forgive your mothers. None of us are perfect. We aspire to do things right. And no mom is a failure. You may, you may have done things because of circumstances. You may have had to give up a child. You may have lost a child. You may have um, had a mental breakdown because life just became too much for you. Your children will still love you. You are still a gem in God's eyes. His light is still shining through you. Allow him to emanate that light through you. Go into his presence. Let him put more lumens, more light, more love into your heart so that you can have the love of Jesus Christ shed abroad in your heart onto those around you. And may it start with your family. May it start with your children today. Mother and child, Come into that place of restoration. Come into that place of healing. Build that relationship. The Bible says in what Psalm 147 verse 3, and this is my closing scripture. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Father, we thank you today, Lord God, that you are the one that is healing the broken heart today. You're binding up that wound, oh, Father. Lord, today, release that light, oh, God, on the one that needs you, Jesus, the one who would say, Jesus, I want to know you as my Lord and Savior. I want to learn about your love. I want to feel your love first, God, so that I can pour out that love onto those around me. So, Father, I thank you today that you're touching that heart. If you need that kind of prayer today and say, Lord Jesus, I want to make you Lord of my life. Uh, there'll be a prayer a counselor on the platform who will take you into a room and pray with you. Just raise your hand on your phone, on your device, where you are on this live platform with us or send us a text or an email or a WhatsApp if you need prayer for any specific thing or if you need counseling or or any type of coaching, whatever it is, or mentoring, allow the Lord to do it for you. This is Terry Honey from Victory Praise Chapel and Woman of Substance SA. I want to say that you are an amazing mom and God will not leave you alone. Your children will come 
back to you and you will be restored. Believe that, receive it, and take it for yourself today. Have a fantastic Mother's Day, everyone. Bye now.